That's all nice and easy. Until you run into a weird problem. Hi, I'm Alex Rodan from Learn Color Grading and FilmSimplified.com. We usually discuss color grading or working on a single clip, which makes sense. Usually you're trying to make a single clip more cinematic and work on it, and you can repeat the same process on many clips. But usually when you're working on a project, you are working with many, many clips. Uh, some of these clips are coming from different cameras. And even if like multiple clips are coming from a single camera, certain clips, because they're in a certain location, they need to be treated in a certain way. And a different group of clips needs a different treatment. And you know, you need to work on many clips at the same time. Now, Resolve offers a lot of solutions for this, uh, multiple systems that allow you to work on different clips at the same time. But today we're going to be discussing one of the most important systems, which is the grouping system. The grouping system in Resolve simply allows you to uh, add different clips into different groups so that you can control um, all the clips in a certain group at the same time. Let's take a look. Speaking of Resolve, if you're a beginner and you're interested in learning how to use Resolve, you'll love our free crash course that will teach you the basics of every tab in Resolve. Simply go to filmsimplified.com and sign up for free. So here I have this timeline that is comprised of many clips. Now, some of these clips like this one is using a certain uh, color space. Like I guess this was uh, S-Log2. Uh, this was S-Log2 also. However, this is S-Log1. And if we move to the right, we have some clips that use the Canon. Uh, like I think this is uh, Canon uh, Log. So let's take a look at a very simple example. Let's control the colors of two clips only at the same time. So you see these two clips here, I want to put them in a group so that if I control the colors of this clip, the same changes will be automatically applied to this clip. Well, adding clips to a group is pretty simple. You simply right click on the clip and you say add to group. So I just double clicked on this clip in order to select it and now I will right click. And here I have an option that says add into a new group. Before I click that option and add the clip to a new group, there are multiple situations where you might uh, right click on a clip, but you will not see the add to group option. Well, if a clip is not selected, so notice that this clip here has this orange border around it and this one doesn't, which means that this is the currently selected clip. If I click on this clip that is not selected, note that I don't have the option here to add the clip to a group. So rule number one is that you have to double click the clip to select it, then right click. And here you have the option to add into a new group or add into current group. We'll discuss these in a bit, but you must first be selecting the clip. Also, if you're not on the clip node tree, so this is the node tree here and notice that we are currently on the clip node tree. If I click here and switch to timeline, so this is now the timeline node tree. And now if I right click on the clip, notice that I have a different set of options and I don't have the option to add this clip into a group. So first the clip must be selected and the node tree must be on clip mode. So I'll switch here to clip and now I'll right click on this clip and I'll, and I'll click on add into a new group. And Resolve here is asking us to give this group a name. So let's call this Canon Lock. And I'm going to hit OK. And notice that once we added the clip to a group, we have this icon appearing below the clip. This icon simply means that this clip is added to a group. Next, let's add this clip. So I'll right click on it. And this time, instead of selecting add into a new group, I will select add into current group. So the group of whatever clip is being selected now. However, the word current group is not always very clear. So I think you should go with the other approach of simply going to groups here. And in groups, you have the groups that you created. I already created a group called cam a bit earlier. And here I have the Canon log group. So the first option here is to assign this clip to this group. So this clip will be assigned to the Canon log group. I'll click. And now I have this green icon appearing below this clip, meaning that it's added to this group. But this is not the easiest workflow because what if you have hundreds of clips? You're not going to keep on clicking on each clip, right click, add to group, right click, add to group. Well, you can select multiple clips at the same time and add them all to group with one click. So notice these next four clips, I'm going to select all of them. So click here, I'm holding shift, click here. So now they're all selected, right click, groups, 
canon log assigned to group. And now you can see that all of the selected clips have been assigned to the group. So now we have all of these clips here, so one, two, three, four, five, six, assigned to a group. Now, that's great. All what happened now is that we assigned these clips to a group. But how do we control the colors of the group, not of a particular clip? Because if I come to this clip, for example, so this clip is selected and I make it really red, just to make things clear, notice that this is the only clip that became red and we did not affect the other clips in the group. Why is that? Well, I'll reset and take a look at the nodes area. At the top here, notice that we have four dots now instead of two. So for example, this clip is not a part of any group. Notice it doesn't have the green thing here. I'll click it and then we take a look at its nodes area. We only have two dots at the top. And if we click on this drop down menu, notice that it has only two options. So clip and timeline. However, if we select this clip, which is a part of a group, so I double click on it, it's selected, and next we come here to the uh, nodes area, and I open this drop down menu, note that we have four different options here. So we have group, pre clip, clip, group post clip and timeline. So if I click on group pre clip, for example, note that here, the title of the node area changed to group pre clip and the selected node is yellow. So this is a different node tree than the clip node tree. Note that if we click here and switch to clip, now we are in a different node tree. So I'll give you an example. I'll add one more node here. So note that in the clip node tree, we have two nodes. However, if I click here and switch to group pre-clip, note that we have only one node. So this is a different node area. And here, for example, I'll add four nodes and maybe move this one to the bottom just to make sure that this looks a bit different. And then we click here and switch to group post clip. That's another node area. And finally, if we click and switch to timeline, now this is an empty nodes area. So now we have four different node areas. So we have group pre-clip, then the clip, node, post clip, and, and timeline. So the image will first be affected by the group pre-clip. So that will be the first group of nodes affecting the, the clip. Then uh, the clip nodes area will be affecting the clip, whatever color adjustments are done there. Then the image will move to the uh, group post clip where more nodes will be added. And finally, yeah, the uh, timeline. So I'll just reset everything. I'll switch to group post clip, reset it switch to clip, reset, and switch to group pre-clips and reset. Notice that now I'm in group pre-clip. So all the nodes here will be the first group of nodes affecting not the clip, but the entire group. Notice that it says group pre-clip. So this will be the first group of nodes affecting the group itself. So let's repeat what we've done earlier. So I'll simply go to gain and make the image really red and notice what happened. The entire group just became red. So all of the clips in this group became red. So now all the nodes we added here affected the group. And this allows us to control the entire group at once, because in many cases, you will need to affect multiple images the same way and you don't need to keep in copying. I know you can, of course, copy the clips from one, uh, uh, copy, sorry, copy the nodes from one clip to the next to the next and just keep on doing that. But what if you have hundreds of, of clips that are coming from the same source camera and you just want to make a small change? Well, this will allow you to make exactly that. So let's take a look at an example. Now I'll reset the group post clip and notice that when I reset this, even though I'm on this clip, but all the uh, images were resetted at the same time. And now I'll open the effects panel. I'm going to drag the color space transform effect. And here um, I know that the input is uh, basically Canon uh, wide gamut. And then the input gamma is Canon log. And let's say that I want to switch this to uh, the DaVinci wide gamut. So I'll switch here to uh, DaVinci wide gamut and I'll switch also to DaVinci intermediate. So now this color space transform effect did not affect this single clip. We just added this transformation, changing the uh, color space from Canon to DaVinci wide gamut on all of these clips. Let's add another node and we just add in some contrast, for example, just to make things better. And notice that all the adjustments were added to all of the other clips. 
Now, notice something important. The adjustments I made seems to, at least to a certain extent, maybe like, let's just add a bit more contrast here, change the pivot, and much better. So the changes I made suited this clip, so notice the exposure here, and suited this one also, so these are good adjustments for this clip and this clip. However, if I move to this clip, because of the difference in exposure, this clip is much darker than the other two. How do we fix that? If we add one more note, for example, and increase the gain, notice that this node's area belongs to the group, which simply means that it will also affect this image and this image which is not something that we want to do. So what's the solution here? Well, we need to affect one clip, which simply means that we need to move now to the nodes uh, area of the clip, not the group, which is pretty simple. I click here on group pre-clip and switch the clip. And now this node structure here simply affects the clip and doesn't affect the group anymore. So now I'll select this clip that I want to increase the exposure of, and maybe I'll just use the offset to increase it a bit. And we just affected this one clip. In order to show you that this node uh, tree here, when it's on clip, affects only one clip, I'll simply uh, add a new node, make the image really uh, red again, and notice that the changes here only affected this clip because we are on clip. Mo, well, that's all nice and easy. Until you run into a weird problem. You know, when working with nodes, the flow of the image through the node, so which node affects the image first and which node affects the image last, really matters. You can't simply move uh, um, nodes around and expect to get the same colors. The, the node tree, uh, the image need to flow in a certain direction. So we have the group pre-clips uh, uh, node tree change the image in a certain way. Then for one of the clips, only this one, we affected it on the clip level. So now we have a different node tree for these three clips, even though they're part of the same group. So this one has only two nodes. So if you go to group pre-clip, notice that we only have two nodes affecting this clip and the same for this one also. So we have two nodes only affecting this clip. However, when we go to this clip, we have these two nodes. But on top of that, if we move to the clip section, we have one, well, because there's, there's no effect on this node. This node is not doing anything here now. So we only have one extra node. So for this clip, we have three nodes. So two nodes, two nodes, three nodes. What if we wanted to add a new node? And we wanted the node to be the last node that affects all the clips. If you put it in the group pre-clip, that node will be affecting the image before the clip node because it will be in the group pre-clip section. And that's why we have the group post-clip section. So now if I switch from group pre-clip to group post-clip, now if I add a new node here, and for example, add some effects, so add some contrast, change the colors a bit, these changes that I made here, because it's in the group post-clip, will be added after all the nodes in both the group uh, pre-clip and the clip node uh, graphs or areas. Also, you can tell Resolve to filter the clips and the timeline based on the groups they are in. So here I have the timeline. Notice that I can go to clips here and here I have an option to filter by grouped clips. So for example, I can ask Resolve to show me only the Canon log group clips and notice that the timeline now is only showing me the files that belong to a particular group, which in this case, the Canon uh, log group. So this allows me to see all the clips in a particular group really fast. The grouping system is only one of many solutions in Resolve to work with, with many clips at the same time. But the nice thing about it is that it provides a very easy and intuitive way to work with clips that is pretty simple. Uh, you simply can work on the group before the clip or after the clip. So you can add nodes that will affect all the clips in the group as the first group of nodes, so that's pre-clip, or as the last group of nodes that affect the clip. Of course, uh, whatever you put in the timeline, group will, uh, timeline is not a group, it's just a, a different nodes area will be affecting the entire timeline. So for example, let's go to clips and go back to seeing all clips. And now I'll switch from clip to timeline. And this is the timeline group. Whatever I add here will affect all the clips on the timeline. So if, again, if I make the image really green, ah, 
I forgot to add a node. The good thing is that usually the timeline uh, area comes with no uh, nodes added. So I'll simply add a new node. And now we have a node in the timelines area. And now whatever I do in this node will be affecting all the clips on the timeline. Again, let's try to make this green and notice that all the clips on the entire timeline just became green. However, again, notice that the, uh, the timeline thumbnails did not update. Sometimes that happens, but if you click on a a particular clip you'll see that it's green because it's being affected by the node in the timeline area which affects everything. Uh, the solution to that is pretty simple. I need to right click on any of the clips and here there's an option that says update all thumbnails and Resolve now just updated all the thumbnails and everything looks green. Uh, let's remove this uh, node from the timeline so that we can reset everything. Everything still looks green. Right click update all thumbnails and all the thumbnails have been updated now to go back to their original image. So this allows you to work on multiple clips at the same time. Uh, I hope that was helpful. If it was helpful, please visit us at filmsimplified.com where you can join our free DaVinci Resolve crash course that is designed for the absolute beginner and will take you through every tab in 